thanks. Um, yeah, so I have the tough task of being before lunch, so thanks for that. Uh, this is also the first time I've ever spoken at a conference, so sorry if this goes kind of horribly wrong and you're all hungry. Um, so yeah, I wanted to get into this with just a bit of background on me. Um, so I've been working with WordPress now for uh, about 15 years, mainly in the um, agency space. Uh, I ran an agency for about 10 years and then moved over to my current role, which is head of design and UX at Big Byte. Um, and for those who don't know Big Bytes, uh, we are a WordPress agency working primarily in the enterprise space with mainly publishers, but that sometimes varies. Uh, and we work, we're a WordPress VIP goal partner, which allows us to work with some, some quite big names in publishing, which is really cool, uh, and a lot of global news teams and enterprise brands. Um, now, obviously, everyone in this room kind of understands what I mean by that, but I have kind of struggled recently um, to kind of describe what I do. Um, in the past, I would say I'm a web designer, which kind of like covers a lot of, a lot of ground. Um, but now kind of explaining this to you know, outsiders or friends, family, new people I meet, I'm not really sure how to kind of describe what I do. So I'll end on something like I make websites. It's pretty broad, but yeah. Or even more broad, I work in tech. Um, now this doesn't really matter, but it's kind of got me thinking a little bit about how we actually make WordPress websites these days in the kind of modern era. Um, and in the past, when I worked in an agency, the process of making a website would kind of look something a bit like this. Uh, a client would give a pretty bad brief, and then I'd throw a design together and make it look pretty, and then we'd put some lorem ipsum in where the content goes. Uh, we'd kind of put that together in HTML and CSS and JavaScript, and then there'd be another process that we'd define as something like put it in WordPress, uh, which would basically mean making a theme, putting in some custom fields, asking the client to log in, and then we've got a website. Um, now, obviously, that's not the best way to make a website, but we kind of all got by a little bit using that method. Um, but thankfully, it doesn't really look like that anymore with kind of modern technologies and JavaScript and React and Gutenberg and headless architecture and agile methodologies. It's kind of, it doesn't look a lot like that. And thankfully, we have kind of evolved a lot since then. Um, and especially in this enterprise space that I kind of work in now. Um, but in truth, when I look at it now, I don't really make websites. Um, and this is where I give a shout out to Aruba Ahmed at um, WordCamp US, who gave one of my favorite talks there just recently in um, Washington DC. And she said, you're not building a website, you're empowering someone else to build a website. And that kind of stood out to me as quite a powerful message, um, especially in this modern era of working with um, WordPress and Gutenberg and full site edit in particular, where you know, everything's a block and we're always breaking things down into component parts. Um, and I think we look at the web differently now, or at least I do. I mean, I see everything in that kind of reusable components and patterns. Um, and that's hugely appealing to me, obviously, as a designer coming from a design background, because there's an obvious correlation there between block-based editors and design systems. And that kind of covers a lot of my client-facing role um, at Big Byte, um, working with brands. And typically, clients that we work with were brought in as a development partner. Um, so these organizations will have big teams already with a lot of you know, UI designers, UX designers, researchers, uh, QA testers, even sometimes developers. And we're kind of brought in not to kind of design a website, but integrate into their teams um, and use WordPress as another tool in the arsenal, really, of creating content. Um, and I think the changes over the past couple of years to the editor um, has made truly really WordPress the, the best CMS on the market, I think. Um, and I often find myself in pitches to potential clients against other content management systems. Um, and I always like that, obviously, because I enjoy kind of speaking about WordPress. Um, but I do truly believe that WordPress is kind of best place to integrate into any company of any size. So we often see um, organizations 
on kind of legacy platforms, often custom built. Um, and it makes it so difficult for them to kind of complete simple tasks, um, even something like putting an embed on a page. It's, it's often very difficult. Uh, and their editing experience is kind of a lot of, a lot of fields. It's, it's not flexible, uh, there's, well, there's zero flexibility when it comes to layouts, uh, custom post types, things like that. Um, so we worked with Gumtree a couple of years ago. Um, and you can see here we've kind of got an overview of a design system on the left hand side that we kind of worked with their teams to produce and worked out how we would kind of take that design system, build that out as WordPress components, which you can see in the middle here, uh, and then how that will render render on the front end. Um, and previous to this, they were kind of, you know, they're, they're obviously, you know, a fairly big organization. It was actually taking them like three or four hours to create a blog post even, which is just crazy. Um, and often they would need assistance from developers. Uh, and I think the best thing for me working on something like that is to kind of empower users to be able to create dynamic content really quickly and easily. Um, and I think that's where the flexibility of the editor kind of comes into its own, especially at this enterprise level, because it's actually, it's unusual to have this kind of freedom and flexibility at this level. Um, and why, you know, why shouldn't someone in a marketing team be able to kind of pick up a system and build out a post or a landing page with this kind of level of flexibility? And I, you know, that's why I think WordPress is kind of best place to do this. So we, we've used WordPress, um, we, well, we've used Gutenberg from the start, really. And we've made, uh, we've probably made quite a few mistakes along the way. Um, and I think one of the things that we've learned, particularly recently, is um, this idea of kind of working with the core platform. And I'm really glad that this talk kind of comes after Tammy and Sarah, uh, because <laughs> They kind of like hit on a few points that I was going to try and get to, and they probably did it a lot more eloquently than me. But basically, the, the core platform now is so good and so powerful uh, that it really gets you most of the way there, I think. Um, but in the past, particularly when we started using Gutenberg at the beginning, we were building custom blocks for absolutely everything, basically. Uh, we were struggling to do kind of complex layouts, so we built something like a column builder or we'd struggle to make that into you know, semantic sections, so we'd make a section block. Um, and you know, basically what we've got here isn't too far away from what the core platform looks like now. But it just goes back to this idea that we want to work with WordPress and not against it. And I think the problem um, where we see clients getting into is when they go against this idea. And that's always where people trip up. And that's not necessarily just the editing experience, that could be anything. It could be the architecture, it could be you know, not working with post types correctly or taxonomies or URL structures. That's always where people trip up. So <clears throat> at Big Byte, um, like I say, we work a lot with publishers. Um, and oftentimes that means the front end of the website is completely decoupled uh, from from the editor. Um, so in, in some cases, that means a single article could be popular in multiple different websites, could be apps, magazines, it could be even print sometimes. Um, so in these circumstances, we're really only solely focused on the editor um, and making that as powerful as possible with kind of this idea in mind. How do we create, make creating content easier, more efficient, and faster? So we've, um, we've worked quite a lot with The Times recently. Um, and obviously the, the previous talk talks about headless and this kind of, uh, this is a headless, headless system. So again, we're kind of, how we use it isn't someone who is, you know, editing the homepage and templates and, you know, custom, um, you know, editing core features. They're just journalists who want to write, edit and publish stories. Um, so given this, what can we do to make that core editing experience of WordPress better for them? Um, so if we take a look at 
this is a, a typical article on the Times side. There's nothing you know too scary there. We've just got headline, stand first, featured image, um, tags, taxonomies, content. Um, so if we kind of take a look at the editor uh, and look how we could use this to kind of get pretty close, um, I'll be quick. <laughs> so we can get you know quite a lot of the way there, but actually if we take each of these individual elements, there is a bit more complexity to them. So for instance, this headline at the top, um, that's actually displayed in numerous different places across the site. So that could be on the home page or a sidebar, and sometimes that needs to be shorter. So that title actually needs to be shown in multiple places. So we've kind of taken this core platform, and I think that goes back to what you were saying, Tammy, about understanding this platform and how you build kind of correctly on top of that. Um, and we've kind of came up with this block called the multi-title, where you can see at the top, um, we can switch between article, homepage, SEO. We can shorten that down uh, in the homepage. And then from there, um, there's other things that we can take from this to kind of make this editing experience better for them. So you can see that uh, we could maybe take some of the typography, some of these colors. And this is actually what the editor looks like on the Times now. So you can, you can see that you're starting to bring in some of the styles. And you, you can see how that is more empowering for a journalist to create content in there. Because then if we just start putting in core, core um, blocks and images and text and links, even embeds, as you're building up that article, you almost don't even need to preview it because you're getting a very good idea of what this looks like on the front end. And you can imagine how refreshing that is for a journalist, um, you know, especially compared to what they were used to using. <clears throat> um, now, obviously, on top of that, working with a lot of these brands, there is a need to create more custom functionality. Um, we talked a little about, about revisions earlier. Now, revisions is something that we've had to put quite a lot of work in. Uh, this is what revisions look like now. And you can see, going from this kind of very pretty visual editor to this, it's not quite the same. Um, this is. You know, it's almost made more for developers. Um, you know, a journalist is kind of going to struggle to go from there to this to understand what's happened. So we've had to kind of build our own revision system um, over the past couple of years. And you can see we've taken that idea of that visual editor, brought that into revisions, um, and we're able to kind of render those in here. Now, as I was talking earlier about the columns, uh, and going back to kind of using core WordPress, obviously with the, with the phase three things coming, um, in an ideal world, what we'd like to do is be part of that development of that revision system, bring in some of these learnings, and then hopefully use that as a base, back to that idea of working with WordPress. And then if we need to build on top of that, we can. Um, just finally, quickly, uh, there is you know other things that we do that are completely custom, probably never will be in court, or you know, frankly should be. Um, so we do quite a lot of work on the New York Post with, um, with Ali, uh, who also work on this site. And you can see um, the images on this are generally collages. Um, and the process of doing that is kind of how you would imagine it to be. So someone would write an article, put in five or six images, they would send that off to the photo desk. They would take those images, put them in Photoshop. Uh, they'd have templates, um, put those images in it, send it back. They'd upload it to WordPress. It's a very long process. So they, <coughs> they asked us if we could essentially do this in WordPress. Um, so we built this collage creator. It looks a little bit like this. Um, <coughs> so we have all of the templates on the left-hand side that the knees a slot for each one. You can upload media into it. You can even do cool things like putting in overlays. Uh, you can change the position of that. Uh, and then we can save that out into the article. Um, so that kind of covers quite a lot of ground. Um, but there's so much that goes into this. And obviously, I don't have time to go into a lot of it. Uh, but we have, along with um, 
some of our friends at these other agencies produced a white paper recently called WordPress for Enterprise that kind of digs into more of this in terms of security, architecture, you know, scaling, hosting um, that, you can, that you can read. And I think, I think the key thing is the way we're building for WordPress now is, is probably not going to be the same in five years' time, ten years' time. Uh, and you can even see with things like AI coming at the minute that that's going to change things a lot. And you know, all of us in the kind of agency space uh, experimenting with this. And no one really knows what it's going to look like. But I think, again, going back to the idea of WordPress being this kind of flexible tool and us being able to stay agile and nimble and adapt to techno emerging technologies, I still think we are kind of best placed to, to grow with that. So thank you. You can also ask me at lunch if you want, if everyone wants to eat. Um, what would you say are some good like, uh, practices to maintain as you design on the design side for uh, new backend functionality? In terms of the, the UX of yeah. custom feature, the custom functionality. Yeah. Um, one thing I was going to say, actually, particularly when we're talking about revisions, uh, and one thing I think I need to get better at, and we as a company need to get better at, is kind of contributing all that back into the core, um, into the core community. And I think, I, you know, I, I do lean on a lot of that stuff, and you know, even taking like patterns and components from Figma and being able to kind of use that as a base UI. Um, and I think we do that from a development point of view as well. We have you know, some developers from Big Byte who might be able to go into that in more depth. But again, it just goes back to the idea of using as much of the core components as possible. So the experience of moving from the core platform to something custom doesn't feel alien and it feels like you're using the same software, even though obviously it is, it is custom. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love your revisions because I use revisions a lot. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a very beautiful thing. Um, so, what's what's blocking you? Is there something in the community could do to make it easier for you to contribute back? Because I think if, I'm sure there's not just a big bite, but a lots of places that, mm -hmm. that we could actually integrate into the core software. But we need to make it as easy as possible for people to do that. So. Yeah. Um... It's, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's a tricky one, and it, it is something that I've, I've been thinking about a lot. And obviously, you know, coming to the events like this is kind of pushing me more in the direction of, you know, being able to do that, and obviously meeting people and having these discussions. I do quite honestly find it quite daunting um, a lot of the times to kind of, if, if you're not already part of that, kind of making that first step in there. Um, so maybe something like revisions, because I know that is something that's you know high on people's minds um you know maybe you know i think we just need to talk to people who are kind of involved in that process and bring some of our you know knowledge and learnings and that's that can be from me from a kind of product angle or you know development because you know with that in particular we have we have ran into a lot of problems it's a very tricky thing to get right revisions um so yeah, this is more WordCamp. Maybe more contributor days, because that's something that contributor yeah, yeah. work on. Yeah. Obviously like everything that I've gone through there is kind of around this idea of it being flexible. But actually a lot of times when you pitch that to clients or you show that to someone who's not in marketing or design, they're like, Whoa, that's that's too much flexibility. We don't want people to be you know, messing about with stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I mean there is a lot of stuff that we have to do in terms of permissions, uh, just, just on a kind of technical point of view. But I guess it's, it's also getting companies to kind of buy into that vision, because uh, I think people are just like not used to that. Um, so I, th I think there is a challenge there of just you know, getting companies to kind of trust that process. 
uh, and trust their users to use these tools that are obviously very powerful. But I think a lot of people's first instinct is, well, that can only go wrong. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, th there are obviously safeguards that you can put in place there. Um, but yeah, it, that is, it is quite an interesting, interesting area. Yeah. And something that we, we, we always come up against with clients.